I made my homework, but anyway, it was not enough to beat him. I no need to wish him, he become undisputed anyway. He too good for this welterweight. Y'all heard what Cherry Chukadzan had to say about Jerron Boots Ennis, bestowing major compliments on the young man, you know what I'm saying? Showing nothing but love and respect and giving them props. Boots, not so much. Like I, I always say, I want to fight the best. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired of fighting these no bottom tier guys. Damn! A bottom tier fighter? <laughs> Respectfully, <laughs> I'd have to disagree. So he's a hell of a fighter and he's a very, very tough competitor. Is he though? If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. If I tell you I'm no good, you know one line. <laughs> Yo, what's good, Boxer Talk family? It's your boy, Dr. PGNG M. Praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out. So last night, we saw a lot of good fights in Philly, man. We saw some upsets, particularly from Khalil Cole and Gallegos. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy. We saw Bear Rodriguez handle his business. But amongst others, you know, Ray, Ray, Ray Ford had a great debut at 130. Zaquin Moses had a great professional debut as well. Shout out to their opponents as well. But we want to talk about the main event, which is Jerron Boots in this versus Karen Chukadzian for the rematch to satisfy Boots' IBF mandatory, you know. So let's see how it goes, man. I thought it was a great fight, you know, and um, just to give you a recap, you know, of course, obviously Boots won by decision and, you know, he was visibly frustrated throughout the fight, you know, but I, <laughs> but the thing that I thought was funny was that like we just showed you at the intro, you know, Karen was like very complimentary towards Boots. I even thought it was a dope thing to say, you know, he doesn't even need to get undisputed at 147 because he's too good for the welterweight division, which I disagree. I think it's important and a necessary part of the process a natural process of progression in your career and the progression throughout the ranks is to a, a, achieve these accolades and accomplishments like being unified in your division or even undisputed maybe not have to get undisputed but unified would be nice you know so i think that that would be nice for him to to do before he moves up to 154 or at least 147 behind but if he does it i think the the general consensus around the boxing landscape and especially amongst fans is that fans are that if he goes to 154 they'll be satisfied with that and that's that's up to him you know but according to him and eddie hearn they want to stay at 147 but the thing that i want to say is i want to critique boots a little bit i'm not on the bandwagon where people are saying oh this is a bad fight this is a terrible performance shut up bitch no i think it was a good performance shout out to boots karen came to fight you know but the thing that's a red flag to me is that when boots is once again saying that his lack of performance or his frustration in the ring was due to his opponent, Karen. And that's what's supposed to happen, homeboy. Like, people aren't signing up to get knocked out. He's a respectable fighter. You, he lost to you twice, and he lost to another guy early in his career, so he has three losses. He's a, he's a respectable fighter, formidable fighter, who I think would be a tough out for anybody, you know? And there's no shame in that. But when you come out here and you say that you hope he doesn't run because he ran in the first fight which to him he was saying it was good footwork i kind of leaned towards boots on this one i think he was more so you know uh demonstrating evasiveness as opposed to uh effective footwork to try to land punches and stuff i think he was mostly evading boots in the first fight so i could understand that sentiment but then now you say that you want him to fight you implore him to fight and he obliges he now he, he fights you and you knock him down in the fifth round and he loses the point for clinching too much because he was indeed clinching quite a bit but what is indicative of clinching that's a testimony to show that when you're clinching you're up close so before you were bad because it was too far away and now he's too close so my point is that this shows that you are limited in the adaptability department you have to work on your adaptation like you can't be mad at the guy for not being close enough for you to hit and now he's too close you know because he's clinching like yes people aren't trying to get knocked out that's part of fighting you have to adapt and move accordingly you know maybe go to the body a little more maybe not headhunt as much but it can't always be, oh, I came up short or I didn't look as impressive because of my opponent's abilities. Well, opponents are going to get better from here on out. So it's up to you to try to adapt and react accordingly. And I just think that that was just a little dismissive. I didn't like that to dismiss him and call him a bottom tier fighter. First off, first off I don't think Karen's a bottom tier fighter at all. And if he is a bottom tier fighter, then why don't you look as great as you want to look? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I don't think this was a bad fight. I thought it was an impressive win because I respect the fighters. Just like Jerron Boots Ennis is going to go back and prepare for this for, for this fighter 12-week camp or however long it is, Karen, too, also went back to the drawing board, looked at the fight, reviewed the fight, and, and adapted and reacted accordingly and implemented his own game plan and executed it very well because he was catching them with looping shots, uh, uh, leaping shots, excuse me, leaping shots and short shots and, and hooks and stuff like that. So I, I want to give... 
Karen all the credit he he deserves for making the fight uh, uh difficult for Boots and I think that Boots has to be more respectful to his fighters I think that's an important part of your growth because look at the greats right first off before I say this I'm not comparing him to the great all all-time all great GOAT in Floyd Mayweather Jr I'm, I'm making a comparison and contrast between their careers and moments like this oppositions like this like I think there's a parallel here so hear me out once again I'm not saying he's as good as Floyd for you goofballs out there you dumbass what I'm saying is though even Floyd Mayweather, he's always respectful of his opponents, right? You know, key up his key up his uh, signature phrase. So he's a hell of a fighter, and he's a very very tough. Canelo, he's a hell of a fighter, man. He's a hell of a fighter. So as you see, he always says, oh, this guy's a hell of a fighter. Now, it's one thing to talk trash during the buildup of the fight. You know, you get in each other's face, try to sell tickets, try to uh, knock the other guy down and stuff like that. But after the fight, post-fight, you know, you want to bestow credit upon your upon your opposition and be like, yeah, man, he's a hell of a fighter, you know, and they did this well and this what this what didn't allow me to 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 demonstrate my skills or showcase my skills as as well as i initially thought i would you know what i'm saying but i will get better so it's you take some responsibility and that's how you grow you know but when he's constantly saying oh well this guy first he didn't want to fight and then now he was too close he was clinching too much well like i said no one's gonna sign up to walk right straight to you and let you knock him out and look good that's not the opposition's uh, uh <laughs> that's not the opposition's motive you know they're trying to win as well so i think you have to keep that in mind and and let's let's, let's Let's stick with Floyd, right? Let's stick on the Floyd uh, subject, right? With Floyd, right? Floyd also had fighters that he struggled against that weren't on his level, right? Like Marcos Maidana, famously, he fought him twice. A majority decision and a unanimous decision. Those were good fights. Is Marcos Maidana's an all-time great? No, but Floyd, for whatever reason, stylistically, he came to fight. He was motivated for that fight because he's motivated for all his fights but Maidana was also motivated in trying to prove a point as well so he fought a good fight and it was a competitive fight that Floyd won twice and before you say oh well Floyd was older you know and, and Jerome Boots Ennis is younger yes so let's go back to a fight where it was young younger Floyd right you know pretty boy Floyd against Demarcus Chop Chop Corley that was another co close competitive not, not close you know it was it was another fight that was competitive in spots where where Floyd clearly won same with Jerome Boots Ennis and Karen it was a competitive fight in spots but Jerome Boots Ennis clearly won and I think that's a, that's that's a that's a great comparison right there is Demarcus Chop Chop Corley a bad fighter is is, is 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 he a bottom tier fighter no he's not as great as Floyd Mayweather but stylistically and the way that he was coming in that fight you know despite being dropped twice he made it a good interesting fight while it lasted I think that's what Karen did so I think it was a good test for Boots Boots passed the test would he did I want him to look more impressive throughout yeah I wanted him to stop him for the rematch but just because he didn't stop him and just because he didn't uh wash him as convincingly as we thought he still won convincing like, cocaine is a hell of a drug <laughs> like no there's no way shape or form that you thought karen would win so karen is a formidable fighter i think this is what this was a good win for boots but i would have liked him to win more uh, uh, uh um uh, let's say I, I would have liked him to win more convincingly. However, I would have more so liked after the fight for him to give a little bit more credit to Karen because Karen's not a bottom uh, a, a bottom tier fighter. And if he is, then you really have no excuse for not looking better. Then so you're feeding right into the people that are that that are gonna denounce your performance. So that's just my opinion on it, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about it. Am I tripping or do you think Jerome Boots Ennis look good against Karen or do you think he needs to look better or do you think he needs to go back to the drawing board and maybe you you feel like he's exposed? I don't think he was exposed. I think that Karen fought a good fight. You got to respect these fight he's a good fighter he went to the drawing board changed it up you know and he, he put up a good show but i think boots could have did more even with that being said i still think it was a good performance why the fuck you lying why you always lying like, these things don't have to be uh mutually exclusive they could they could both exist simultaneously like he could we could have desired more but he still won a good fight you know put on a decent a decent enough of performance but y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments don't forget to hit that like button and remember most importantly oh i messed up the thing hold on remember most importantly remember with god we can do anything without god we're nothing the doctor's out peace from the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.